She was desperate. Her life was falling apart. Her health was continually worsening. For 12 years, she was struggling. She had gone to every physician she knew of. She had spent all of her life savings and that of her family. She had no resources left, and yet her health continued to deteriorate. You can imagine her fear as she faced an unknown future. She knew that death was likely imminent, and yet she did not know what she could do. But soon she heard rumor, rumor of this special teacher, of this man that would come into a city and every single sick person would be healed. Her hope was revived once again, and she thought, you know, if only I could see this teacher, if only I could touch him, I know that I would be healed. And believe it or not, this great teacher, this this man of God, was going to be coming through her very city. That day she rose up early and she set off for the marketplace. And there she stood, but she was not alone. Hundreds of people were around her. Everyone was pressing in. They all wanted to see this man, Jesus Christ. As he began to pass through the crowd, you can imagine the disappointment filling her heart. As she thought, he is my only hope. He is my only hope of life. And yet there's so many people. There's no way I can talk to him. There's no way I can ask him for this healing. As desperation began to rise in her heart, she saw him passing through the multitude in front of her, and with one act of desperation, she leapt to the ground. She reached through the legs of the crowd in front of her, and she grasped the robe of Jesus Christ. In that instant, in that very moment, she knew that she had been healed. There as she lay on the city street, suddenly this peace just flooded her heart. She knew that she had been healed. As she begins to stand to her feet, Jesus stopped there. And he asked his disciples a question that his disciples thought was rather strange. Who touched me? Well, Jesus, what are you talking about? Don't you realize hundreds of people are bumping into you? Hundreds of people are touching you? No, 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 no. Who touched me? You see, there are many people that casually bumped against Jesus that day, but only one woman that reached out and touched him by faith. Hundreds that bumped up against Jesus, but only one that received healing. So also in our spiritual journey, how often we bump up against Jesus. We might go to church or go to prayer meeting, go to Vespers. We're bumping into Jesus, but the only one who receives healing is the one who reaches out with all of their heart and says, Lord, I am holding on to you. Lord, I know that I don't have strength in and of myself, but Lord, you can heal me. Lord, you can save me. Lord, you can change my heart. Back in 2006, I heard about this evangelism training school called AFCO. It is the Amazing Facts Center of Evangelism, evangelism, and it is a four-month Bible school. And I decided, after much prayer, to enroll in this program. So there I was, going through this four-month evangelism training program. Now, I was looking forward to hearing all about Revelation and Daniel and understanding the prophecies and learning more about my faith and really studying deep into the Word of God, the sanctuary and health message. But one thing I did not realize, I did not realize that AFCO would require me to go door to door in a community, offering community services and offering Bible studies. Now, for me, that sounded terrifying. I'm naturally a rather shy individual. And so the thought of having to go to a neighborhood and knock on doors and meeting strangers and offering them Bible studies, that sounded pretty terrifying. And yet, my outreach territory was such an incredible blessing. Maybe you've seen those areas of town or lived in them where the police officers are constantly circling, constantly driving by. You see the guys on the street corner during the middle of the day, and they're selling drugs. The guys out front that are smoking marijuana. And that was my outreach territory. I loved it. 
You see, the people in that area felt their need. They were searching for something more. And it was so beautiful to walk into that community and to minister to their needs. I met a woman by the name of Betsy. Betsy was in her 60s and she had a massive toothless grin. She was always happy and smiling. You see, she had lived quite a rough life. She had been a drug addict. She had been involved in prostitution. She just had a very tough upbringing. And she'd never studied the Bible before. And so when I offered Bible studies to her, Betsy quickly said yes. Every week I would go to her house and we'd sit down together on her couch and we would open up the Word of God. Those Bible studies continued for about five weeks when a prophecy seminar soon came to town. I invited Betsy to come to that prophecy seminar, and every night I would drive her to the church. One night, about a week and a half into the prophecy seminar, I was going around that outreach territory, and I was visiting people that I had had Bible studies with in the past, trying to encourage them to come to the prophecy seminar. And I received a very strong impression. You need to go visit Betsy. Have you ever argued with the Holy Spirit before? I remember in that moment again, arguing with the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't need to go visit Betsy. I'll see her tonight. I'm driving her to the seminar tonight. I don't need to visit Betsy. And yet that impression grew deeper. So I finally decided, well, why not? I'm in the territory. I might as well stop by. So I pulled my car over and I began to walk into that apartment complex. As the guys out front, as they're smoking their marijuana, were saying, oh, here comes that Christian girl. I climbed up the stairs to Betsy's apartment, knocked on the door, no answer. Knocked again and still no answer, but I knew the Lord had led me there for a reason. I knocked a third time. And this time, the person who opened the door was not the Betsy I was expecting to see. Have you ever seen the look of complete despair? of complete hopelessness and emptiness. And I looked at Betsy and I said, Betsy, what's wrong? Betsy, what happened? She invited me into her house and we sat down there on the couch. Betsy began to explain. And she said, you know, I was sitting here in my room trying to decide the best way to take my life, the best way to commit suicide. What if I had not gone? What if I had not finally listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit and gone to Betsy's house that day? This story would have been quite different. And yet, by the grace of God, he led me there that afternoon. By the grace of God, we were able to read Bible promises together. We were able to pray together, to hug each other, to cry together. And by the grace of God, Betsy surrendered her life to Jesus Christ that day. Betsy continued to come to the seminar and about two weeks later, it was an incredible privilege to watch as Betsy climbed into that watery grave of baptism. That toothless smile was spread across her face with joy as she surrendered her life to Jesus Christ and went down into the pool of baptism. I remember standing there on that day and saying, Lord, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to lead others to experience that joy in you. You know, Betsy and the woman that was suffering for 12 years, they have a similar story. Two women that were desperate for healing, that were desperate for something more in their lives, and two women that reached out by faith and held on to Jesus Christ. Like Jacob of old, when he cried out and he said, Lord, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And I believe today that God is calling us to be like them. He's calling us to reach out in full surrender and full faith. As we hold on to the robe of Jesus Christ, he will not let us down. God is calling us to say, do you recognize your need today? Are you willing to give your all to me? Are you willing to cast yourself out by faith and hold on to my robe? Because when you do, you too will experience healing and joy in Jesus Christ.